to another video from Jörg, Juggler 66, Hour of the Truth. Again, in collaboration with my wonderful brother in Christ from the United States of America, Tom Fress, who runs his ministry under the name Inquisition Update since more than 10 years. Now, for the moment, only available on YouTube, on his own YouTube channel, and that will get a big expansion within the next few months, I'm quite sure. It hasn't now, and he knows why, and he is not even telling us why, that is not necessary, but he will expand his work on this channel a lot in the future, I am very sure about that. And today we gathered here together to come for the sixth reading to prove to you not only that uh, Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of Daniel's 70th week, but also that there is lots and lots and lots abundant proof of that in the New Testament. And that is the case that we are going to do in these readings. We are going to prove by the New Testament that Jesus Christ was and still is the fulfilling of Daniel's 70th week when he came 2,000 years ago. So there is no 2,000 year gap. Hello, Tom. Welcome to the broadcast. Hello, Yerk. It's my pleasure, privilege and blessing to be here and uh, my uh, uh, blessings to your listeners, too, and... Uh, it's a wonderful thing to realize uh, that uh, Daniel's prophecy was uh, a privileged information straight from the portals of glory telling Daniel and Daniel's people when their Messiah would come so that they could even put an X on the calendar uh, when he would come, so that they would know the time of his coming, so that they could meet him and uh, herald his coming to the whole world. I mean, after all, it was the purpose of uh, the Jewish nation to evangelize the world, to show an example, the whole world of the mercy and grace of Almighty God, available through his son, the Messiah, who was finally after all the prophecies in the, in, the, in the law and the prophets having to do with Jesus, he was finally going to be fulfilled. And uh, something that the whole world and even heaven awaited. And uh, God, as he promises, does nothing except he reveal it through his servants, the prophets. 
And the coming of Messiah was given in, in prophecy to Daniel by the angel Gabriel. And uh, Daniel knew the time of Israel's visitation by their Savior. And, uh, and when he came, his ministry lasted for seven years from his baptism un until the going forth of the, of the uh, gospel to the Gentiles. The, God, the, uh, the prophecy was for Daniel's people, the Jews, and for Jerusalem. And, uh, and of course, he was baptized in the river by the, uh, the prophet uh, John the Baptist, and uh, that began his ministry. And uh, after three and a half years, he caused the sacrifices and oblations to cease by giving up his own life. And then three and a half more years of the Spirit of Christ through his apostles, his Spirit-filled apostles, continuing to preach Christ and him crucified, the salvation of Israel, until the final rejection by the Jewish Sanhedrin and by the nation of Israel, three and one half years after his crucifixion, the end of the time period given to Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, and the gospel went to the Gentiles and after that, it's been the duty, blessing, and privilege of the Gentile world to help evangelize the world and share with the world the unlimited uh, favor of Almighty God, merciful favor of Almighty God, grace through faith, and that the shed blood of Jesus Christ washes away all sin, both Jewish and Gentilian. And uh, he is our Savior. Praise God. And, and what we have to conclude is that just as prophesied by Daniel, perfectly and completely, Jesus fulfilled the 70th and final week of that prophecy. There is no further fulfillment of it. There is no re-fulfillment of it now or even in the future. Otherwise, we confuse the gospel. We confound the identity of Messiah the Prince. And that's the whole purpose of the futurist interpretation of Daniel's prophecy that puts the 70th week of Daniel at the end of time and denies the fulfillment of the 70th week of Daniel by Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. The purpose of casting the 70th and final week of Daniel into the future is to deny that Jesus was the Christ and is the Christ and to open the wicked hearts of men to reject Jesus as the Messiah and to present to the world a false messiah at the end of time that's the whole purpose of the futurist interpretation of daniel's prophecy it denies that messiah has come in the flesh two thousand years ago and uh it's a hideous reality to contemplate that nearly every christian church Protestant or Roman Catholic or any denomination you can name, they all preach a future 70th week of Daniel. They're believed to be Christian churches. They're believed to be Protestant churches, evangelical churches. They're believed to be biblical churches. But they're at war with Christ. And so we have to determine if we're going to stay and support these lying wonders behind the pulpits of the churches, or are we going to take back our churches and tell the truth, or are we going to leave the churches and start our own churches in our houses or underground if necessary? But we cannot continue in lies. And uh, it's my privilege to know the truth and to share it freely with anybody who will listen. And what we don't just make blind assertions and expect everyone to believe what we say. 
That's what the pastors and the priesters of the churches do. They want you to walk in the door, check your hat, your coat, your Bible, and your brain at the door, and come in and believe whatever that priester tells you, as if he is some kind of divine authority. But I'm pointing out to you proof positive, undeniable proof that they are all liars not to be trusted and that they ought to be replaced by truly godly men who know that Jesus was Messiah the Prince, that he came right at the end of the 483rd year of Daniel's prophecy, right at the very beginning of the 484th year, and continued until the end of the 490th year, or the complete the completion of the 70th and final week of Daniel's prophecy. Only then, only then, can anyone understand what is really going on in the world today. And if you cannot comprehend or will not comprehend that Jesus fulfilled the 70th and final week of Daniel's prophecy 2,000 years ago, perfectly and completely, as minutely recorded in the New Testament, then you cannot possibly understand the magnitude of the deceptions that are going on not only in the churches, but in the world. Because the whole world is a stage for the enactment of a phony, false, future 70th week of Daniel, a seven-year period of time requiring in fulfillment, that there be a modern nation state of Israel, that Jerusalem be the center of power in, in Israel, that there be Jews living there, that there be a temple built, that there be getting animal sacrifices and a seven-year seven treaty with a future antichrist and then after three and a half years, this phony Antichrist causes the sacrifices and oblations to cease in the new temple. And then the world is prepared to receive their new Messiah, their phony Messiah, their false Messiah, denying by their actions that Jesus was the Christ that he fulfilled the 70th week of Daniel. That's where people are in the churches today. How do I know? I was one of them. And I'll live the rest of my life correcting my error and thanking God for his grace and mercy and sparing my life. Back to you. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Those were very interesting words that you spake here in the beginning. And um, while you were speaking, Tom, I had to think of a part in the Bible that makes very clear um, one uh, thing that people often ask themselves when they say, Jesus Christ was the complete and utter fulfillment of Daniel's 70th week. Um, the point is, um, what we have to understand that uh, Jesus Christ fulfilled the 70th week, the first half, in the flesh, and the second half, in the spirit. That's now, right. you know that I am not very well with remembering exact book and verse, uh, book, chapter and verse, um, but I think it is in the book of Matthew. And uh, if you want to, we can, uh, of course, look for it on the internet and then read it. But uh, Jesus Christ said to his disciples, that um, they were to forgive sins, whatever they bound on earth was bound in heaven, and whatever they loosed on earth was loosed in heaven. And that is a order he gave them before he went to the cross. And when the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles in the book of Acts, they were given these powers. And that were exactly the same powers that Jesus, that Jesus Christ had. So they were continuing Jesus Christ's work, what he did in the flesh, in the spirit, for three and a half years, until we come to this point that is here in the picture, the stoning of Stephen that you see uh, on AD 34, 
when the Jews finally rejected the message of the kingdom of God that Jesus wanted uh, brought to them. Of, of course, many people were saved in the meantime. Uh, it, it says so in the book of Acts, daily were added thousands of souls to the kingdom of Christ, which is here on earth today. It is a spiritual kingdom, but it is here. It is not something future. It is here already. That's also something people do not know because the church does not teach that correctly. Or the churches, let's say, as you uh, made a good point. But I think it is also interesting, uh, just before we go into the reading today, um, to make sure to the people that they understand that Jesus Christ fulfilled the complete 70 years week in two parts. The first part, three and a half years in the flesh. That's what we are going to deal with today in Daniel 9.26. And the second part, in the Spirit, through his apostles, who were given the powers, the exact same powers that Jesus Christ had. And that's also why, with the apostles, those gifts, yeah, they stopped. They didn't, um, they didn't continue after the apostles died, after the apostles did their job. Yeah? They, they, they did not continue. Even until today, they did not continue. It was just the apostles. They completed Daniel 70 years week in the spirit of Jesus Christ. These three and a half years that you see here at the last, after the crucifixion, until Stephen was stoned. I think, Tom, that is also necessary that we go into that. Shall I look these verses up, or are you comfortable uh, speaking about that uh, from memory? No, I, I'm comfortable speaking about it from memory. The listeners... Uh uh, can read their Bibles for themselves. And part of the reason we're doing this is to encourage people to read the New Testament again. The authorized King James Version, preferably the 1611, I know it's hard to find, but read the New Testament again for yourselves to, to see with your own eyes. I, I'm not a dictator. Don't take my word for it and expect... I don't expect people to believe what I say just because I said it. And Yerk has the same philosophy. Look at the New Testament, and you will see for yourself that it is a divinely inspired, infallible, and perfect record of the complete and perfect fulfillment of Daniel's 70th week by Jesus Christ himself. That's the whole purpose of this discussion so that you can see with your own eyes out of the scriptures the infallible historical account and record proving beyond any argument that the 70th week of Daniel is over, perfectly and completely fulfilled by Messiah the Prince, just exactly the way Daniel prophesied it to be. And once you understand this, then you can know in your heart of hearts that what is being preached in the churches today is a lie, a diabolical lie. And you can also understand its diabolical purpose. And once you understand what futurism was designed from the very beginning to do was to cause God's people to reject the truth and to believe a lie, a lie that has deceived the very elect and prepared the Christian world to receive a false Messiah. That's the whole purpose of futurism. But if you can see with your own eyes, as Yerk has, and as I have, and has, and many others have now, that, it, that the New Testament in total, particularly the Gospels and the Epistles, are in historical record of the perfect and complete fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy. There is no portion of the 70th week of Daniel that is not fulfilled in writing in the New Testament. It's as if the New Testament was written for the very purpose of, of proving beyond any doubt that Jesus was the Messiah, the Prince, that he fulfilled Daniel's 70-week prophecy completely and perfectly, and you have now no excuse 
to continue to believe the lie that has deceived the whole world, even the very elect. I'm sorry to be so long-winded about this, but I want people to understand the whole purpose of this study. And you get to, once again, read the blessed New Testament with a, a, a new uh, objective, a true objective. A new understanding, Tom. A new understanding, a true understanding. And uh, you better prepared to understand what is really going on in this world. Why is this world in such turmoil? Because the world is trying to refulfill a lying, deceiving, damning future 70th week of Daniel, and God is resisting them. Satan is trying to get the whole Christian world to receive a false Messiah. And the kings of the earth, together with the papacy, are trying to foment a futurist 70th week of Daniel so that they can present to the world a false Messiah. And God is resisting them. That's happening right before our very eyes. And few people can even begin to comprehend it. And certainly you'll never comprehend it if you don't understand that the 70th week of Daniel was perfectly and completely fulfilled by Jesus 2,000 years ago, and there's no such a thing as a future fulfillment of it. Do you realize that there's no need for a modern nation state of Israel? There's no need for the Jews to live in the land. They can receive Jesus, the shed blood of Jesus, wherever they are. They don't need to live in Jerusalem. And if they live in Jerusalem and build a temple and begin animal sacrifices, is that going to save them? Absolutely not. God no longer dwells in temples made with hands. The shedding of the blood of lambs and goats never saved anyone. Only the blood of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ, which all animal sacrifices were given to portray. So the whole nation state of Israel and everything that's taking place in it is man-made. A counterfeit to reenact a credible or believable 70th week of Daniel, and God is resisting them. And that's why the whole world is in turmoil. And that's why many Christians believe and sense that their prayers don't even make it to the ceiling, much less to heaven. That's why churches are cold and dead and have become social society, a social group, an entertainment system. And some of them are downright pagan, if not purely Roman Catholic in their teaching. That's why people are finding it less and less spiritually rewarding to go to a church. That's why there's very little emphasis on reading the Bible, because if you read the Bible, you come to the divine truth that God intended for every man to have. And that leads to liberty. That doesn't work in a world of slavery. So they want you to follow the yellow brick road right back to a Roman Christ, a papal antichrist. They want the whole world to bend the knee and bow and worship a man in Rome, the papacy has always uh, pronounced itself to be the replacement of Christ on earth. God hidden behind a veil of flesh. That's official dogmatic teaching in the Roman Catholic Church. It's not talked about anymore in the Protestant churches. The Protestant pastors leave us ignorant of all these antichrist statements, all these antichrist acts throughout the entire 2,000-year history of the church to deceive you. 
you can't be deceived if you know the truth. And so they hide the truth from us. And they try to look like ministers of righteousness and that unity in the body of Christ is necessary which is a laudable thing, except for the fact that they want to unite us with the man of sin, the son of perdition. They want to unite us all in a futurist lie so that we all might be damned who believe not the truth. And what's the truth? That Jesus, Messiah the Prince, came right on time 2,000 years ago, exactly as predicted by Daniel the prophet, he fulfilled everything Daniel said the prop, that the, the Messiah the prince would do, even giving up his life and becoming the sacrifice himself, thereby causing all sacrifices and oblations throughout the rest of history to cease, to stop. But yet, the Jews want to make animal sacrifices again. The Roman Catholics make sacrifices every day in every Roman Catholic church around the world. They are systems of unbelief. How do we know? Because they make sacrifices. When you make a sacrifice, you reject the sacrifice that Jesus made 2,000 years ago in the middle of the 70th and final week of Daniel's prophecy. The, most, the easiest way to identify a system of error, a satanic church, is a church that makes sacrifice. And that's what they've prepared the whole world to witness on Mount Moriah in Jerusalem in a modern nation state of Israel with Jews living in the land, Christ rejecting Jews living in the land, a temple to be built, a sacrificial priesthood to be instituted, and the beginning again of animal sacrifices so that the Jews may eat and drink eternal damnation to themselves, once again denying the Christ that bled and died and bought them 2,000 years ago, just as Daniel prophesied. That's the whole agenda. It's the biggest deception since the Garden of Eden. It has deceived more people than you can even comprehend, and you most likely are one of them. I'm not here to insult anyone. Uh, let me be the first to admit, I spent the first 50 years of my life believing that diabolical lie taught to me by every, every Christian that I knew, whether it be pastor or friend or foe. Every Christian teaches the same diabolical lie. The truth is, the 70th week of Daniel is over. Jesus fulfilled it. The New Testament was written to record it so that it could never be contested. But yet the whole Christian world contests it. And they are loath to admit it. They want the remaining world, Christian world to be bound by this diabolical lie to suffer Tom are you still there what's of every church Oh, sorry, Tom, can you repeat what you uh, said the last sentence? Because uh, there was no sound. I don't know what, what happened, but you fell away. Do you hear me? Yes, I'm being, uh, my internet uh, connection is being interrupted. Ah, okay. But, but the, whole, the whole purpose, the whole purpose is to deceive the very elect and to cause the whole world to believe a lie, a future denying that Jesus was the fulfillment 2,000 years ago, denying that Jesus was Messiah the Prince, 
denying that he caused the sacrifices and oblations to cease by giving up his own life. He who became the ransom for sin, who made reconciliation for iniquity, who brought in everlasting righteousness, it's being denied that he was the fulfillment of the 70th week of Daniel. That denial is taking place in every Christian church. You can't hardly find a Christian who knows that Jesus was the fulfillment of the 70th week of Daniel. You can nary find a single Christian who can tell you that the New Testament is the infallible written record of that fulfillment. Every jot and every tittle of that prophecy is recorded in infallible divine writing in the New Testament. How can a pastor who occupies the space behind a pulpit and preaches Jesus and him crucified and reads this divine word called the Bible and fails to comprehend that Jesus was the fulfillment of that 70th and final week and preaches a future fulfillment? How can they say Jesus was the Messiah and turn right around and say the 70th week of Daniel is yet future? How confusing, how confounding, and how fortunate for Satan. And how unfortunate for all of us who believe it. It's time to repent of this childish, diabolical lie and return to the historicist truth. And you'll find liberty in it you'll find peace in it. You'll find understanding in the scriptures. And all of a sudden, for the first time in your life, history and the Bible shake hands. No more contradictions. It's wonderful to know the truth. Back to you, Yerk. Absolutely, Tom. And um, while you were speaking, as you can see, of course, here on the screen, I opened the King James Bible on the verse that I was meaning when I said, when Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Um, this is Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, and I'm not going to deep into that because I think Matthew chapter 18 is something in the future we will analyze very, very thoroughly. But there is in the later verses, meaning verse 21 and 22, so much undeniable proof that Jesus Christ was the absolute complete fulfillment of Daniel's 70th week that I will not hesitate to read those verses today and I want you, of course, to comment on them, Tom. In verse 21 we read, Then came Peter to him. I'm going to highlight this as I go along with the reading. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until Seventy times seven. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is the absolute destruction of any futurist teaching of Daniel's 70th week. Jesus Christ himself said that 70 times seven is the, times, uh, is the time that should be forgiven. Now, why is that of utter importance to understand? Well, let's go into the paper that we read so far. Today we arrived at Daniel 9.26, but let's go back to the beginning. It says in verse 24, 70 weeks, 70 times 7 are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression. What does Jesus Christ say here? You shall forgive the brother who sins against you not seven times, but seventy times seven. Now, Tom, 
I don't think that we are going to do much reading in the paper today. That is probably something for some for some so for some other time. But I think this is the most important verse or two verses that we read so far that confirm in the New Testament, because this is Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 and 22, that confirm the absolute fulfillment of Jesus Christ of the 70th week of Daniel. Isn't it, brother? Isn't, isn't it amazing? How many years did I read over that passage and never comprehend the significance of it? Why did I not immediately recognize what this is? I'll tell you why. Because my pastor never pointed it out. He had me believing that the 70th week of Daniel is future. I made no connection between this passage and the historical 70th week of Daniel, which Jesus fulfilled. This is Jesus. This is Messiah the Prince, whom Daniel prophesied to be Messiah the Prince, who would make reconciliation for iniquity, put an end of sins, bring in everlasting righteousness, and everything else that Daniel prophesied. Here is Jesus himself with his own mouth telling the apostle, telling the disciple, I am the, the Messiah, the prince that Daniel prophesied 69 weeks of years ago. And I came to forgive my brothers their sins who have sinned against me 70 times, seven times. A whole 483, and if you fulfill it to 490 years, Jesus is plainly telling you the red X has come up on the calendar. I am he whom Daniel prophesied. And I'm going to do everything that Daniel prophesied. I'm going to forgive their sins. My brethren, the Jews, have sinned against me 483 years, 69 weeks of years. And this is the last week. That's why we should forgive our brother 70 times, seven times. I'm going to forgive my brethren 70 times, seven times, 493 years. I'll forgive the sins of my people, Israel, the, the brothers of, of the prophet Daniel, his people, which is recorded in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. But after that 70th week, I'm going to go to the Gentiles. And they can do what Judah failed to do. Preach to the world my shed blood. And Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. The Jews are going to be scattered, just like the Israelites of ten tribes before them. The city is going to be ransacked and burned. The people are going to be slaughtered. The temple is going to be reduced to not one stone upon another. I'm not going to leave that temple on this hill for anybody to continue making animal sacrifices, shedding blood on that hill, and mixing it with my blood that I shed in fulfillment, perfect fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy when I caused the sacrifices and oblations to cease. No one is going to continue to use this temple to, to denigrate and to deny my blood that I give to my people even while they deny me and put me to death. I bet no one ever told you that Matthew, uh, this verse in, in, in verse 21 and 22, was Jesus in the flesh, telling the world that he is the Messiah that Daniel prophesied to come at the end of the 69th week, the beginning of the 70th week, and that for one week, seven-year period of time, 
he would fulfill every part of Daniel's prophecy, every jot, every tittle, and that it would be recorded in the New Testament so that no one could ever bring it to question. And what do we find in the churches? Every pastor, every church, every denomination has brought it into question when the 70th week of Daniel is to be fulfilled. It's an impossible situation. Yet, that impossibility has now become the orthodox teaching in all the churches. You can't get more deceived than that. And you must conclude, as I have and as Yerk has, there's no refuge for a Bible-believing, Christ-loving church, uh, Christian in a church that preaches futurism. Those churches, no matter how Christian they appear, no, how, no matter how beautiful their music, no matter how blessed are their, their, their sermons, they're teaching a lie that is designed to destroy you spiritually. And it has had magnificent results. And what would you could expect from a lie so evilly crafted as to deceive the very elect? Now, every government of the world is fixated on that nation state of Israel and the Jews and their welfare living in the land so that they may build a temple and begin animal sacrifices again so that even heaven will have to witness the perfect rejection of the Jews of their Messiah. And every Christian pray that it be so and finance this abomination that's taking place today in the world participated in by every a government of every Christian nation in this world, and even to the degree that they would use the Muslim nations to force international concern for that area of the world. If you begin to understand the scope and the damage that's being done by the what is believed by Christians in this world, all you can do is weep and repent in sackcloth and ashes. All the wars that have been fought in history to make this all come to pass includes the First and the Second World Wars and the current World War on Terror and the enslavement of every Christian in this country by a papally controlled government. And we're either going to go along with this this the charade, this diabolical 70th week of Daniel, or we're going to die. That's, that's what they've got planned for all of us. Well, it's appointed unto man once to die. And then the judgment. Well, I intend to die in the truth. The historicist truth. And I want to share the truth with as many of us will listen. And so does Yerk. Back to you, Yerk. I have to make another point, Tom. And uh, please, nobody get me wrong. I want to warn you of parts of the Bible, even the so beloved King James Bible. When you are reading in the Bible and you are looking for footnotes to lead you into the truth, you will be massively disappointed. The point is, I just have my King James Bible, that is the 1769 Blaney version, open here, as book, on my desk, as we are sitting here and reading and doing this recording. And I opened it in Matthew chapter 18, and I read verse 21 and 22, as you could just see on the screen. Yeah? Jesus saith unto him, but I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Now very often beneath these verses, you find footnotes that give a reference, a cross-reference, to another 
probably another book, sometimes just another chapter of the same book, in this case the same gospel or another gospel. They give a reference to the chapter and to the verse that you should read so that you can read there that what you read here in other words or in confirmation of that. Now, in my 1769 Blaney version of the King James Bible, there is a note beneath Matthew 18, verse 22, that leads me to Mark 11:25. Now, when I open Mark 11:25, it reads, and I'm going to read it to you in a second, and it is Jesus saying, And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your, trans your trespasses. Yeah? That is in reliance to Matthew 18, 22. I say not unto the, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Now, you have to allow me to ask this one legitimate question. If man puts these cross-references in the Bible, aren't these cross-references meant to lead us into the truth? Why? Is there not a cross-reference in Matthew chapter 18, verse 22, to Daniel chapter 9, verse 24? If you cannot answer that question, that's a big problem. I can answer that question, that question for you. Even these Bibles are published by men. And most of these men are corrupt. So never ever rely on footnotes or cross-references in the Bible because they will lead you away from the truth and you will not study the Bible with the leading of the Holy Spirit. You will study the Bible with the leading of man. But man is deceiving. Even in this regard. And that is why you didn't see that all the time. There should be a cross-reference in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, to Matthew 18, 22, and vice versa. But it is not, and this is not only in the King James, so I'm not damning the quote-unquote King James per se, I am damning the footnotes that come in the King James and in all the other Bibles. Well, I haven't studied all the Bibles, but now I have an order to you, dear listener. Why don't you go through all the Bibles in your household or in your library and come up with a cross-reference of Daniel 9.24 to Matthew 18.22? Or any Bible commentary for that matter? Maybe even of Matthew Henry, who, who is, whose comments you can find in Esort. Is that there? Well, I haven't checked yet. I can do that online if Tom wants me to, and while he is commenting on what I just said. But I tell you, read the Bible, and the Bible alone, and study the Bible, and the Bible alone, and not footnotes or cross-references of men, because they will not lead you into the true, complete understanding of the Word of God. Tom? I think it's well said. It's a, it's a very, very valid warning. It's an urgent warning. We're to receive the truth from the spirit of truth and not from fallen, wicked men who have their own agendas. And failing these commentators of connecting this passage in Matthew with Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, is striking. And it uh, betrays an agenda by those who produce our Bibles. An agenda to lead us, as you said, Yerk, to lead us away from the truth and into a lie. Okay? What do you do when you lead somebody away from the truth? you lead them into a lie. That's the purpose of Satan. And uh, 
I, I think it's remarkable that there are so few people in the Christian world that understand the connection between Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, and Matthew chapter 18, verse 22. Why isn't that preached from every pulpit? That is so obvious connection between Matthew 18, 22, and Daniel 9, 24. The very same words. Daniel is prophesying about Messiah the Prince, and here in Matthew chapter 18, verse 22, we have Messiah the Prince identifying himself as the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy, Messiah the Prince. And that he's making direct reference to Daniel's 70-week prophecy. He's identifying himself as the fulfillment of the 70th and final week. Yet you've got every church in this country in one manner or another preaching that the 70th week or some seven-year period of time is going to yet be fulfilled in the future, but by an antichrist. How confusing is that? How diabolical is that is a better question. And this is only one example. The New Testament is loaded with example after example after example proving that Jesus was the Messiah, the Prince, that Daniel prophesied to come at the end of the 69th week, the beginning of the 70th. Look, if, if a Jew understood Daniel's prophecy and could mark on the calendar the very date that that command came forth to rebuild and restore Jerusalem, they would have known precisely when their Messiah would come. But the Jews in that time were just as deceived by their religious leaders about Daniel's prophecy as are the religious leaders of today deceiving us about Daniel's prophecy. And it all has the same purpose. What is that purpose? It's recorded in the New Testament. It says, and they knew not the time of their visitation. Now, let me be clear. Nowhere are we given to know the precise timing of Christ's return. Nowhere are we given to know the precise timing of Jesus' return. If anybody is telling you precisely when Jesus is going to return, he is a liar. Flat out a liar. Mark him and walk away from him. The world is not to know the time of Jesus' return. But if you're a futurist, you're given to believe and know as if you have some divine revelation that 1260 days after the Antichrist breaks that seven-year treaty with the Jews, Christ is going to return. You look at them right in the face and tell them to explain that. And you'll see confounded every pore of their skin. They defy the Scripture. And you, if you push the truth to them, they'll reject it. They'll make every excuse in the world. But that's what a futurist believes. If he's a true futurist, he, he has twisted Daniel's prophecy. He has believed all the prophecy teachers and liars in this world. And they can only come to one conclusion, that 1260 literal days after this Antichrist figure breaks the treaty with the Jews for se at, after three and a half years, then Messiah will come. You know what we can conclude with everyone who believes that? They know not the time of their visitation because it's going to come after that, some indeterminate period of time after that great deception. You can mark it down. And the whole world is going to be caught dead in their lie. 
Every soul is going to be condemned for their deception and believing a lie and teaching the same lie to everyone who will listen. What are they going to do when some antichrist breaks a seven-year peace treaty with the Jews and they've marked some phony individual as the antichrist? You won't be able to convince them anything otherwise. And then what happens after that? The Pope rides into Jerusalem on a colt, the fall of an ass, and declares himself, as he has always declared to the world, that he is the replacement of the Son of God on earth, or rather, God, hidden behind a veil of flesh. What's the whole world going to do? What's the whole ecumenical world going to do? They're going to say this is the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy. They're going to get down on their faces. This is the 70th week of Daniel. And they're going to worship that man. And then Christ is going to come. What is he going to find you doing when he returns? Will he find faith on the earth? Not if you continue to believe in futurism. He will not find faith on the earth. He'll find lies. Deceivers and those who make and believe and teach lies from every pulpit in every church in the whole Christian world. That's the truth. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. I think we are already too far in the broadcast to go start with our paper on page uh, 13 which is the page we should start today with the reading of Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. I think we are better to postpone that until next week, because I think the people have something to chew on in the meantime, and I mean really chew <laughs> and regurgitate, as I think is the proper word that you always the use. The proper term is to ruminate. Ruminate, yeah, yes. thank you. Yeah. And, and I, listen, I... I Part of me regrets that we didn't get further along in this writing. I want the listeners to know. Oh, we have many more times, uh, many more parts to by, come to them. So. By reading from the scriptures that the New Testament is the, 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 the written witness, the divinely inspired written witness of the complete and total and perfect fulfillment of Daniel 70 week by Jesus, Messiah the Prince, and that there is no way to impeach or to gainsay or to bring into question that truth. And we, we have to see it written in the scriptures. That's the most important part. But it also is necessary after, as, as in my case, 50 years of lying indoctrination to prepare the listeners for the truth that they're going to witness for the first time in their lives, in the New Testament, to get a completely different view of how the Scriptures handle Daniel's prophecy, how the Scriptures record every jot and every tittle that Daniel prophesied of the 70th week of Daniel. And uh, uh, you can know for yourself that it does little good to tell somebody something that is so contrary to their lifelong teaching and belief and to do it without infallible, unimpeachable proof. Okay? We need to tell the listeners what they are going to learn. We need to make the assertion about the lie of futurism and what it teaches. Make the assertion that the New Testament defies that belief makes that futurist belief virtually impossible, and then to walk them through step by step, word for word, right out of the divine truth of the New Testament, and show them that futurism is a lie, that Jesus fulfilled the 70th week of Daniel perfectly and completely, and that the Bible recorded it in the New Testament as if it was the very purpose of the New Testament to do so, so no one, none of God's people could be deceived 
when Satan tried to counterfeit the 70th week of Daniel 2,000 years after the fact. And that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do if the listeners will stay with us and listen and read the scriptures for themselves with their own eyes. They will have to relinquish their belief in any part of the futurist 70th week of Daniel and regard it as we do a diabolical lie. If they want to know the truth, they'll hear the truth. If they want to continue to believe the lie, they're going to have to shut us off because we're going to so slam dunk this as to make it virtually impossible to disagree with. You want a, 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 a hung jury on this subject? Not me. There won't be one who will vote against belief in the historicist interpretation of Daniel's prophecy. And only someone who is willfully deceived will continue to believe in the 70th week, a future 70th week. Only one who is willfully deceived. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. I want to pick it up once again at the end of this broadcast for the Bible and the King James Bible. You have to understand that in the King James Bible there are different versions that you can get. There is the AV 1611 version that you saw online that I was reading from in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 and 22. There is the 1769 Blaney version that most people have and that I also have in printed versions over here and that I read for years. And there is the quote-unquote Schofield Bible, which is also a King James Bible. But even the King James Bible can be used by a wicked man to lead you astray. And that they do by the footnotes. Whether by footnotes they write in the Bible or by cross-references they do to the verses. As I explained to you in the example of Matthew chapter 18, verse 22, where it uh, refers to Mark 11.25, and Mark 11.25 again re uh, uh, relies, uh, 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 puts you up to, to, to other verses, but not to Daniel. And I showed you, even as you probably saw in the video, I opened up my eSword, and the commentary of Matthew Henry in uh, Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35, and I scrolled through that, as you could see, and you can do that for yourself, and you will not see one reference of Matthew 18, 22 to Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. So, please understand me correctly. I am not saying anything against the King James Bible, but I'm saying everything against the footnotes that people add to that Bible and against cross-references that people add to that Bible because they will lead you astray and not to the truth. And... One last point, it is imperative for you to have a Bible that is based on the true texts. Because if we can already find faults in the King James Bible, as I mentioned, how many more faults will you discover when you read a Bible that is based on the corrupted Vatican texts of Vaticanus and Sinaiticus? That is based on the Vulgata, which is a Latin translation of the Bible. It's old, I give you that. But A, they forgerized Bibles also a few hundred years ago and thousand, uh, a thousand years ago and even more than a thousand years ago. When the Vulgata came out, when was that? 300 something like that. The Bible of Jerome, the Bible of Hieronymus, the Bible that uh, Constantine ordered by Eusebius. Uh, if you go into church history, you will get to know all that stuff. It is important that you have the true word of God. That is the King James Version, but that is the version in itself. It is not the footnotes and it is not the cross-references. Because those are not from God. Those are from men. And every man's a liar. And that's what the Bible says. So when you study the Bible, you have to study it with the help of the Holy Spirit, not with the help of man. Only with the help of the Holy Spirit, he will lead you into all truths. That is what Jesus Christ promised us. He said, it is expedient for me to go away, because if I do not go away, I cannot send you the Comforter. And the Comforter will lead you into all truths. 
So, rely on the Comforter. Rely on the Holy Spirit, that is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Rely on that Spirit to lead you into all truths when you study His Word, and not man. And then, we'll hope to see you again in the next 7th broadcast, where we will prove more from the New Testament that Daniel's 70th week has been utterly and completely fulfilled by Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Until then, please... Read and study your Bible. Maranatha. Who magnify the Lord with me And let us exalt His name together Oh, magnify the Lord with me Exalt his name together. Let's magnify the Lord so that he is seen more clearly. Psalm 34, verse 3. Let's exalt his name together by living pure and holy. Psalm 34. Thank you.